Okay, awesome. Thank you very much, Hansa, for starting starting this. And hello, everyone, and welcome to our next month of talks. Today, we will discuss how to accelerate your migration to Snowflake with data lineage. Jan Ulrich, a Manta's Vice President of Research and Education, will tell you how data lineage empowers Snowflake users to have full visibility across all your data flows, how to understand data in full context, and how to eliminate manual processes and capitalize on the value of your Snowflake data. If you have any questions for the speaker, please use the chat that you can see on the site and we will make sure to answer all of your, all of your questions at the end. And I'm not going to prolong it anymore, so I'm, I'm going to hand it over to Jan. Perfect. Thank you, Carolina. So we have about uh, 30 minutes for the webinar, uh, so let's uh, jump right into it. And this is uh, how I'd like to spend uh, these uh, 30 minutes. So basically, first, talk about uh, the migration process in general and uh, some specifics to, uh, with uh, regards to migration to cloud, uh, about the challenges that uh, there are and uh, how Lineage can help. Uh, talk about uh, the uh, Snowflake itself, just a brief introduction for those who may not be that familiar. And then really focus on how Data Lineage helps when uh, performing that migration or even planning the migration. And also to, to finish with um, how Data Lineage helps at the end. Once you've migrated, once you have the new environment uh, up and running, ready, um, is there still a value for metadata? And if uh, time permits, uh, we'll do a brief demo of uh, how uh, that uh, data lineage can help with migration to give a little more hands-on and, and visual uh, representation of that. So um, if you're going to have any questions, uh, feel free to pause them into the chat and uh, we'll make sure that uh, we'll address them at the end of uh, this webinar. So. Um, Speaking about the migrations, uh, I actually borrowed a few quotes uh, from uh, Gartner's uh, report. Uh, this is one from uh, February this year, and it actually very nicely uh, describes uh, the typical challenges that uh, organizations have when running the migrations in general, but also migrations to cloud. And the first of them is uh, actually about uh, the growing diversity of the platforms that we're using, right? Uh, several years back, it was just data warehouse and then few systems. Now it's a uh, data lake, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and uh, the scope is significantly growing. And with that, uh, it also uh, the, the risk and cost of the migrations is, is growing as well. Um, the second one that uh, uh, was really interesting is uh, that the migration teams uh, that who are actually responsible for the migration itself to make sure that uh, it's done properly and, and well can be very easily overwhelmed by the environment, by the complexity and the scale of the migration effort, especially when they go deeper into the weeds and uh, uh, start looking into uh, specific areas to be migrated. And uh, without any surprise, this uh, often leads to delays, but uh, also to the, as uh, Gartner calls it, uh, uh, very fittingly, a uh, turbulent post-migration experience for the end users. And uh, that's definitely the last thing that uh, that we want uh, the new users of the new or users of the new system to experience, right? And the last one is actually a outlook for 2022 where uh, Gartner says that uh, over 50% of the data migration initiatives will exceed the budget and timeline, which is really crazy to, to think of. Um, so basically this webinar is uh, about uh, how we can mitigate these risks um, with using of, of data lineage. So, Speaking about the migration, typically what everybody focuses on is the end result, right? Um, so speaking about the cloud migration or migration to cloud, to Snowflake, uh, we're focusing on uh, what we are going to get, what, what benefits uh, are waiting for us, uh, like uh, scalability of the platform, um, um, basically almost unlimited computing power, uh, elasticity, we can, uh, we can scale up, scale down, right? Um, almost no setup time, uh, very, 
simplified ease of access and uh, that uh, nice feature of uh, Snowflake that provides a zero zero copy cloning service for data and so on and so on. So this is all, all good. But uh, how about the migration process itself? Are we thinking about that sufficiently? And based on the, the Gartner's research, it, it, it seems that, that not. Uh, that basically uh, teams are overrun by the complexity that they discover, that uh, there are shortcuts uh, being made, which uh, leads to uh, leads to future uh, issues when when, uh, customer, when end users start using the system. And if you think about the main issues uh, or main main challenges that we have to address during the migrations, it is really about uh, the dependencies between the systems, right? The complexity that, uh, uh, that that comes is the dependencies, how where the data are coming from, where the data is being used, and what's actually happening in the system itself. And all of this is uh, basically leading to the data lineage, the data flows. And uh, the the other aspect is uh, just uh, making sure that the migration is is safe and um, and reliable, right? So we do not want to break anything. We do not want to miss anything. Ideally, we do not want to uh, migrate what's not needed anymore, uh, some sort of legacy items or legacy data sets that are not being used anymore. And as we're typically migrating very large systems, um, we need to run the migration in phases, which means it's not just one weekend, but it may be a set of weekends over a, a month or over a year to actually complete the migration end to end, which is very demanding. We need to uh, make some changes during that time as well, right? So how do we actually address it? Um, the, the answer that, I'm, <laughs> that I want to talk about uh, today, and that's definitely just part, of the, uh, just part of the answer, but a very important one is data lineage, because data lineage basically streamlines, streamlines the migration. It simplifies uh, uh, the, the, the whole process by, under, by getting the understanding ahead of time instead of uh, uh, retrospectively during the migration process. So what actually is data lineage? Data lineage is basically an understanding of uh, how your data flows, of your data pipelines. So uh, as you can see on the illustration over here on the, uh, in, in the picture, uh, the data flows are those pipelines that go from left to right. And we have one source that's highlighted in black. And uh, we can see how the data is actually disseminated from there, from that single source into different pipelines, into different systems and uh, where it's actually being used. And the huge benefit of uh, data lineage is that uh, when you have this information in advance before the migration starts, you can actually uh, do quite a lot of, uh, quite a lot with that uh, to reduce, uh, reduce the risks. And I will talk about additional value of data lineage towards the end of the burner, not just uh, for, the, for the migration. So, um, this webinar is uh, titled uh, uh, Migration to, to Snowflake and uh, how Data Lineage uh, automates that. So what actually is Snowflake? Snowflake is a uh, cloud computing platform that is designed for various uh, uh, data operation tasks and uh, different uses. So it started as a data warehouse, but it supports data, data lake uh, uses. It supports data science, uh, reporting, analytics, and so on. Um, a huge benefit of uh, Snowflake is definitely that uh, zero copy cloning capability. So basically you can create copies of data without actually copying the data itself, which makes it just uh, much faster. And uh, when you actually update the original data, you get the, your copy updated as well. And that's a huge benefit. Basically none of the on-premise databases can do this for you. So uh, with this, in mind, Snowflake is becoming really one of the uh, leading platforms in the data analytics space. All right, so why do we care about the metadata automation with automation in focus? Really, the, uh, the, the most important thing is to understand that, as Gartner says over here, um, and I, I should probably give a bit of time to, to read the quote. But basically, as, as Gartner says, 
Um, as you step into the migration, typically you start with uh, a high level estimate of what the effort is going to be. But that estimate is uh, then precise with the further steps of, um, or for the phases of the, uh, of the migration itself. And as it says over here, basically only after you finish the analytics phase of the migration, so basically once you're about one third through the migration project, only at that point you actually find out the actual cost of the migration itself, right? So in other words, you have to do really a lot of work in advance to be able to uh, assess the cost and in the end, basically calculate the business case for the migration in the first place, right? And that's actually really scary because uh, basically you're sort of walking in, into da in, in the dark until uh, you find out much, much later what it's going to be. And this is definitely something that uh, your business owners uh, do not like to hear and do not like, do not like to see. So uh, the, the goal here is really to try to understand and estimate the cost and the approach very accurately much sooner in the process, ideally before we, before we really start, right? So what do we actually need to consider before we start migrating or while we're migrating? Um, basically, you can think of uh, the migration as, uh, as uh, this uh, uh, regular path uh, that, that we are following, and that's the traditional type of approach. And we are trying to st uh, streamline it, right? Make it, uh, make it much more uh, easy to navigate and uh, ideally know it in advance. So first of all, we are dealing with lots of legacy systems. These legacy systems have been uh, implemented for, you know, past, 20, 30 years, and it's not just the system that we're migrating over to Snowflake, but it's also the systems that are touching that, uh, that, that migrated system, right? So systems that are feeding data and systems that are actually consuming the, the data. So we need to understand the dependencies between those. And most importantly, we need to understand the current state of, uh, of uh, those uh, interfaces and of those interactions because as they were designed quite a few years back, very likely they have changed and uh, they are working very differently now. Um, we already talked about the inaccurate effort estimates, basically because we do not have enough information about those systems. We are making just high-level estimates based on high-level understanding of the, uh, of the metadata and of the systems and their interconnections. So that's something that we need to change. We need to go much deeper very early on without much effort, right? Um, same thing basically is about incomplete understanding of the scope and impact because we do not know how the systems are exactly connected, right? We understand it on the high level, but we do not know the details. Uh, we may be very easily missing some things and uh, we only get to them during the analysis phase where we actually find out that uh, this particular data set is also consumed by, by Joe's system and we need to migrate that one as well. Right? So again, lineage information and the understanding of the data flows gives this information in advance. Um, data dependencies across the environment we already talked about. Lack of internal knowledge. Um, as the systems have been developed over years, people who were um, originally part of the uh, implementation or, or design team may be long gone or have moved to a different roles and so on and so on. So basically that internal knowledge is uh, sort of fading out in, in many areas, especially in terms of why things were designed in a particular way or what may be uh, one of uh, cases that, uh, for example, did not go through properly uh, through previous migration. Um, outdated documentation, uh, we are all very familiar with that and so on and so on. So overall, all of these basically lead to unexpected surprises that, uh, that result in delayed timelines, um, extended scope, and such extended budget. So how do we actually overcome these? We really address this with the, with the data lineage by uh, having the systems and not just the migrated system, but the environment uh, analyzed ahead of time so that we can actually perform uh, automated analysis of the environment to um, assess the 
complexity and the scope of what's going to be migrated and to uh, decide on how we want to define the phases, migration phases, right? And I'll show that during the, uh, during the demo. So once the migration is actually completed, um, do we still have any use for metadata and how beneficial they are? Does all of this work to get the metadata prior to migration for a system that uh, we are about to decommission make sense? Does it really pay off? And the answer to that is yes, it does. Because um, you're migrating just part of your environment, right? So when you migrate it, let's say your um, SQL or cloud data, data warehouse into Snowflake plus part of your analytics, but the rest of the environment remains. So your CRM, your um, uh, online sources, all of these remain and you're just feeding them into a different place. So you still have these systems and whenever you touch them, it makes sense to, to keep them uh, keep them updated and to have the metadata about them uh, available. And basically on the high level, if you look at the business, uh, business value and uh, bus uh, uh, business additions of, uh, of, the of the metadata automation, you're basically able to deliver faster and for example, gain market share quicker you can boost business agility or again deliver faster um, implement projects uh, with uh, uh, lower risk and so on and so on so how do we actually uh, do it with the with the snowflake and what's a more concrete value that you can uh, extract from it so first of all agile data workflows um, basically anytime you're working with a, with, a, with, a, with a system, anytime you're touching it, you need to understand what you're changing. So similarly as during the migration process, when you actually uh, were to assess the um, scope of the change and the effort that's associated with it, that it will require uh, maybe even um, testing required teams that you will need to even interact with. That's all the same after the migration, when you're making the changes to the new environment. So in the Snowflake environment, you still need to do the changes and you need to do them efficiently. And again, as uh, mentioned at the beginning, as uh, the uh, variability of the environment grows and uh, you're adding new systems, um, the risk simply increases. So with keeping the data lineage and metadata automated and up to date, you're uh, changing the process and uh, making it better for the for the future cases. On the cost side, uh, you can actually save a lot on the integration testing because in, in many cases, uh, uh, customers tend to do a lot of integration testing. Um, that is uh, sort of a, a shared resource over the organization. And with this uh, integration testing, if you don't know well what you need to test, in many cases, you simply test more just to be safe rather than test what's needed. And again, with the uh, understanding of the data flows, what's being impacted and affected, you can actually do the uh, testing much more safer in a smaller and a more limited scope, which also helps again with the agility. Uh, if you test small scope, you can do it fast, right? And overall, you can actually build a lot of automation tasks, for example, for the impact analysis, which I'm going to talk about uh, in, in a moment. Enhanced trust in the data. The basically the biggest uh, uh, biggest challenge in uh, adopting new technologies and really getting value out of them is insufficient trust in data. You know, this new system that has been implemented um, does it really do what it's supposed to do? Uh, does it take the data from the right source? Um, especially if you deliver a few, maybe not 100% correct results or consistent results, um, the trust in data simply drops and trust in your system simply drops, right? So with having data lineage available, you can actually even visually show where the data is coming from, what uh, operations have been made on, on the data and uh, how uh, the data is actually being used further. So with that, simply building this transparency, 
it gives uh, your data scientists, your, your business analysts, your business uh, consumers much more trust in what they are actually looking at and confirm that you know what, uh, what, what you're doing. The second reason is uh, really as uh, the last point over here says self-service. Um, I do not want to put here another quote for, from, from Gartner, but if you read about uh, the distribution of time, how data scientists and business analysts spend time when working on a, on a specific project, it turns out that uh, a large amount of the time is spent on actually finding the right data or validating that the data that they are about to use is uh, is of the uh, is from the correct source or has not been uh, has not been uh, changed or if changed then how it was actually changed. So basically, data scientists instead of doing the, the true data science, they are simply tracing the data back to the source to confirm that it is the data that they they, they are supposed to be using. Again, this is a lot of time in terms of, um, of duration and a lot of effort uh, that uh, we're simply paying for without actually bringing any additional value or without bringing uh, enough additional value. Data lineage, in this case, with the enhanced trust in data, helps both of these groups to get the understanding of uh, the, the data flows and where the data is coming from, what, uh, they, went, uh, what they went through. And if any questions are needed, then the data scientist can focus on asking the, the right person the right question, because uh, the data scientist sees that uh, there's a specific transformation applied uh, somewhere in the process, but they can focus on the transformation instead of focusing on the whole flow and uh, uh, discussing the, the, the whole flow. And the last but not least, um, Data lineage uh, significantly helps with um, uh, regulatory compliance. Um, there are financial uh, regulatory requirements, especially for banks like BCBS 239 about um, uh, risk and, and so on, but also um, uh, regulations like GDPR and CCPA about uh, personal data that uh, are focused about where the data is how, how you're processing the data, right? So where the personal data, where you collect the personal data and how you use it throughout the organization. And if you're using it properly, for example, if you are doing um, anonymization, if you are using encryption, um, if uh, the systems that are using the data have, uh, have the right consents for, for that particular use. And again, without not understanding where you, where you use the data, and where it disseminates uh, even dynamically throughout the environment, uh, it is very hard to comply with these regulations, right? So uh, definitely uh, one of the uh, advantages of uh, using data lineage is actually being able to comply with the GDPR, CCPA, or BCBS uh, much, uh, much more easily because you are in the control of, of the data. Excellent. So these were uh, sort of three highlights of uh, how uh, data lineage helps. There are definitely more, uh, but uh, that would be out of the webinar scope. So let's move on to the live demonstration quickly. Um, let me just share my screen. All right. So we're looking at the um, at uh, Manta, and uh, currently I'm looking at the uh, quite uh, recent snapshot of the repository that already has the Snowflake. But as we're talking about the migration, let's take a look at uh, uh, the case where there was no Snowflake, right? So this is pre-migration. And that's exactly the situation that, uh, that you run into. You have your environment, you can see lots of systems over here, and uh, you're trying to migrate that one. So let's pick a specific data asset. It's called CRM client over here so that we can uh, take a look at how this uh, CRM client table is actually being used. And uh, this is probably a very similar um, visualization as we've seen on the picture. You can see that this is uh, our source. And now we can see how it disseminates into other systems, basically each color represents a different system. So we have at least uh, one, two, three, four systems here. And in fact, if we dive a little bit deeper, we may find out 
that there are actually more systems that may not have been uh, that have been hidden to for for clarity right so this is immediately a huge value that you're getting because without actually doing almost any work uh, you see how the data propagates throughout the environment and that's something that you can use immediately now um, let's assume that you're about to migrate this green system over to Snowflake. So what do we need to understand uh, about the system in that case? We need to understand how large it is, what, uh, what, how the data flows through that system, and what happens to the data. Right? So if I uh, zoom in over here, I can see that, for example, this customer name is actually being calculated here. Right? It's being calculated or created from the family name and first name. So immediately, this is uh, something that uh, can help you with assessing the scope and complexity of the migration because you can uh, programmatically capture the number of uh, transforming attributes compared to non-transforming attributes that are simply uh, transferred as is, right, without any change in the, uh, in the system. Uh, similarly, you can programmatically actually um, assess how many consumers this data element actually has, right? We have at least one, two, three, four, for consumers that we need to talk to and understand how they are using the data, right? We may have some end user reports that we need to validate after the migration. So all of this information can actually be accessed, not just visually like they're doing over here, but also programmatically to give you metrics. And you can use these metrics to um, assess the, the complexity of the migration and associate it with, with the effort. You can, for example, uh, aggregate and uh, uh, aggregate the, the transformations that are happening in the environment to simple, medium, and complex. And uh, with that, you can associate to them with um, a specific number of hours that you need for them uh, to actually rewrite the code for them and to migrate them. Right? Similarly, it actually helps you assess the integration testing. Over here, you immediately see, here's my connection to a reporting tool, SSRS reporting tool that I will need to um, test against. And I have uh, one, uh, in this case, in this demo case, I have just uh, two objects that I need to test, right? So I don't need to test everything. I just need to test these specific two objects. So I can very much significantly narrow down the scope of the migration. And if I go back and move on to the after the migration environment, I can actually do a very similar thing. I can actually take a look at my CRM client table that I started with, and I can take a look how it looks in the, in the new environment. So in this case, I'm looking at the uh, just the um, Snowflake instance of the table. I see that it's still sources from, the, uh, from my Oracle system, from the red one, as we've seen before. But I can see the flow through that Snowflake environment, how it lands in the target report that I wanted to validate and uh, test through the integration. And again, I can go deeper and take a look at the individual column level uh, that may help me in the future when I'm touching the customer name. Um, I have all the information available and ready for the use next time for next migration, for next uh, change, for implementing a new um, uh, data science project, and so on and so on. Awesome. Is that it, Jan? That's basically it. Um, so the key takeaways from uh, from uh, this uh, this webinar are really that uh, data lineage is a key to speed up the migration, reduce the risk. And make sure that you're that you know what you're getting yourself or your teams into, um, without surprises in the future. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for covering such a broad topic in just such a limited time. I can see there are already some questions in the chat, so I just want to encourage the rest of you. If you have any questions, now is the time to put them there, and we'll make sure to answer answer them all. So let's go to the first one. Uh, George is asking how implementation on existing Snowflake solution works and how much time does it take? Perfect, perfect. Right, so um, as discussed, you can um, deploy Manta on the Snowflake itself, but also on the uh, larger environment where you cover multiple systems. 
Uh, when we're talking about the Snowflake itself, uh, you would install Manta, configure connection to your Snowflake, select which database, data warehouses, databases you want to have analyzed, and just run the scan. So provided that you have uh, all the privileges, that you have all the access and so on that Manta requires to do the work, the implementation can be done in well, technically in, in, in hours, but realistically, it's uh, typically more about uh, a, a week of time uh, to make sure that you get all the access. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, okay. The second question is, uh, is it also working when ETL orchestration is outside of Snowflake? Is it based on script history? Excellent question. So um, with Manta, uh, we support several technologies. Uh, we have scanners basically for each technology, for database technologies, for ETL technologies, for reporting tools. So depending on what uh, ETL tool uh, you would be using, um, it may be supported out of the box or you have always option to ingest the metadata um, uh, from, from other sources or like custom metadata into Manta as well. And uh, Manta is reading the uh, scripts that are stored in the Snowflake or potential external scripts that you run against the Snowflake um, instead of the script history. Uh, the reason is that only by analyzing the, all the scripts, even those that may execute only once a year or once a month, uh, you get full lineage, right? So. Uh, Basing the lineage on the script history, history only is good, but it may not show you everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay. And the last question I see here is customization enabled or required? Right. Uh, so with the customizations, um, it really depends on what kind of customization we are talking about. Definitely, if uh, you need to ingest uh, metadata from sources that are not supported by Meta out of the box, that's definitely um, possible. And uh, there's an API for it uh, where you can load the metadata in. Um, yeah, I guess that, that's it. Uh, definitely, George, if you um, want to discuss in, in more detail, uh, feel free to uh, reach out and uh, we can have a more detailed session to uh, answer the questions in more interactive manner, I guess. Thank you, Anne. Okay. I think that we covered it all today. We are only four minutes uh, <laughs> later than we, we were suspected, but thank you very much. Thank you all for staying with us until the very end and have a great day. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.